Hey everyone, welcome back to Miniature Mashup. This week I've made a little cottage from a D&D tabletop fantasy role-playing game systems. It's a little cutesy-poo, it's a little bit like something you'd see on your grandma's bookshelf, but I kind of like it. It's got a lot of uses, it's, uh, it's to scale. It's not incredibly realistic, but it could be a cottage where uh, lumberjacks live in the woods and work, put carts and shops around it. It could be a shop downtown. It could be a place where a ranger is stationed out in the woods next to a guard tower. Now this project starts with a birdhouse, and it's of the 99 cent variety. Uh, there's a kind of birdhouse you can find at uh, Joanne's Crafts, Michael's, Walmart, on uh, eBay, that uh, goes for about a dollar. And I'd say this is that size me, I picked it up for a quarter at a thrift store. Now the first thing we're going to do is take that bird perch off. Lots of ways you can do it, but I think the best is probably with this little coping saw. And then clean up anything that might be left behind with my safety knife. There's a little bit of a stump there, and I want to make sure I work that off because I'm going to be gluing stuff uh, to the front there. I'm going to be covering this up. Now I'm going to go and I'm just going to scrape this thing up with my safety knife. Uh, I'm getting the front and the back and the sides. And then I go over it again with a gouging tool. I've got a wood gouging tool, and uh, that digs nice rivets into the wood. Otherwise, the wood is a little too perfect. It's a little too pristine to really look like any kind of a rustic cottage. And uh, we want to add a little realism. We want to add a little detail, some points of interest. So you got to get in there with that wood carving tool. Now, you can make these lines much straighter than I have. You probably get a little more realism out of it. Me, I'm just attacking it. And I think the overall effect is fine. Uh, you, like I said, you could certainly uh, put a little more time into this part and probably get something uh, that looks a little better than what I did here. Now, the door I'm gluing on here is uh, one I made with a silicone mold. It's based on uh, an amulet I have. Producing that with some Durham's Rock Hard Putty and uh, using that as a door for my miniatures. It's nicely to scale. It's got some good little details on it. Now, I'm going to cut some craft sticks here to go with the uh, front sort of to provide uh, additional structure and the style of houses from the medieval or renaissance period. With these craft sticks, we're just going to trace the size we need by putting them on the front of the house and then drawing on them with a Sharpie marker. And then I'm just going to cut them with some wire cutters, some heavy duty wire cutters. Just chop that up nice and slow so it doesn't splinter or break. Just don't put a ton of pressure on there. Sort of ease that through and you'll find these turned out to be perfect fits. Now for putting two pieces of wood together like this, your hot glue gun is going to be all you need. I've got a pretty good sized one here for projects like this. And I just sort of ease it, you know, onto the spot I want it on exactly. And we'll do the same with the other piece. Now I'm going to make a couple of cross beams for the exterior structure of this little cottage. And we're going to do the same thing. We're just going to hold them uh, in front, this craft stick in front of the space we need. If we're gonna cut it, we're gonna err on the side of cutting it a little long because you can always trim it down. If you cut it too short, you just gotta cut another craft stick. So, uh, but I cut these perfectly. I measured them, took my time with it, and uh, they went right in beautifully. And I just stuck them on with some hot glue as well. And it already looks better. It already looks more realistic. There's another level of detail. But we are going to go back and do something with those sticks. But uh, for now, let's fill in the sides, which are very stylized in the style of a um, birdhouse. They're the least realistic thing on this project, so we've got to do something to cover that up. Now, I could just build a wall all the way up on the side with uh, popsicle sticks here, these craft sticks. But instead, I'm going to opt to build a window. But the window isn't going to go all the way to the ground, so I am going to put two craft sticks on either side of the base of our little cottage here. And I'm just going to apply them stick them on like we did with the other outside structure bits made of craft sticks with some hot glue and measure them out the same exact way just hold the craft stick up to the project draw over it with a draw over it with a sharpie and then cut it nice and slow with our wire cutters and of course we're going to do the same thing on the other side now we'll take care of the back we're going to make the structure much the same way on the back here, I had to cover up the hole where the birds would get into the birdhouse. Now I've got a little piece of what looks like a sewer grate or an air vent grate, uh, which came off of some kind of toy. I go to the scrap exchange here in Durham and it's a secondhand store specifically for artists. 
one of the things you can pick up is lots of little plastic bits of toys and stuff like this little plastic tube that's going to serve as our cooking stove or our pot-bellied stove exhaust pipe which is going to come out of the roof and i'm just cutting that at an angle so it'll sit on the roof nicely it's just a cheap piece of plastic uh, certainly you could find something similar for your own uses and we're just going to stick that right about in the middle here on the right side of our cottage and just hold that down as the hot glue does its work this is plastic to wood it's not quite as good as wood to wood with hot glue i am going to put a couple of bushes in front of the door here and these come out of a dollar store christmas set so you get four of these little bushes for a dollar these were a little more fitting i thought style wise the other ones were a little too christmassy now for our bay windows once again i am going to be pulling from uh, some toys that i got from the scrap exchange this is just some kind of netting from some racetrack set or something like that and that's going to be the structure that becomes our window now if you don't have something like that there's always the plastic and excuse me for not knowing the term here uh thing they use in cross stitching that sort of white plastic grid it would make a fine window or you could certainly make something with toothpicks or popsicle sticks here uh, for me i had this on hand i got to use this stuff up so I just sort of went with the plastic toy for my windows. Uh, sorry guys, not to lead you on a universal journey we can all go on. Uh, you're not gonna have all the same materials I do, but a lot of this is sort of for inspiration. Now here I am gonna flock the base, which means spreading some white PVA glue on the base. The base in this case is made from a raisin lid, which I'm gonna trim down so it's not quite so tall. And now I'm dropping sand. I've got craft sand that I got from the dollar store. And we're just gonna put that on top of that glue and let that sit for at least four hours. If it's nice and hot and dry out, you can put it outside, it'll dry a little faster. Now, I base coated this in gray, but I had to go back and fill the windows in with black. And while I was doing that, I thought to myself, I might as well just give this whole thing a Zenith All Prime. So I hit the top of it with white as well. I'm gonna take an extra step beyond priming in one color. You might as well just do a Zenith All Prime. That's what I say. Now, once we've got it back inside the house here and the paint's all dried, our primer, I'm gonna start applying lots of thin, even coats of brown. That's gonna be the main color here. This is, in fact, uh, raw sienna uh, I'm putting because the understructure is gonna be lighter. As you can see, I'm dry brushing something called linen on here. I wanted to go for kind of a dirty whitewash effect. Uh, which I think came off okay. I don't love the paint job I did on this project, but I think it's suitable for what it is. I'm using big brushes, and it's really just sort of about getting this done quickly. I gotta cover a lot of area, and uh, it's not gonna look great no matter what. It's sort of a handmade cottage thing. So uh, I didn't kill myself on the painting of this. I pick out a couple of boards on there from linen. I go over them again uh, with the raw sienna, just to sort of give it a little character make it look like it's a little bit more cobbled together and not quite so uniform. As you can see, I'm picking out details as I go. And, uh, we've got sort of a darker brown for our outside structure and roof. And of course, we're going to dry brush a little metal on the door hinges and on our stove. So we want a base coat in black. And lastly, we're going to highlight the roof here. And let's take a look at it. I think it turned out pretty good. For you, faithful viewer, if you've liked this cartoon, please like and subscribe to the channel. Consider visiting us on Facebook or making a donation to my GoFundMe campaign. The links for both of those are in the description below. As always, thanks for watching.